Fisher rescued more than 1,000 mariners off the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador last year, and a lot more in the years before that. We're standing here, We're standing here in, honor, in honor of the lives that have been lost at sea. 151 last year and continuing to happen today, as we all know. We stand, Mr. Harper, in honor of all of those people to fight back and to say that your decision is wrong. Aside from all the people that uh, came out here today, that the people of Makuvik, and the people from Maine and all points in between, between the city of St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and all the places, they're not here in body, but they are definitely here in spirit. Let's give them a big hand. Sit up, Stephen Harper. Listen to the people of this province. Reverse this ridiculous decision. Lost a family member, a co-worker, a friend, or a shipmate. You share the collective grief of our province when our unpredictable ocean takes a life or several lives. We know that the work environment can be dangerous, but we expect that men and women who work in the fisheries and offshore industries do so with some basic protections and assurances. And what could possibly be more basic than an adequate search and rescue service based right here in this province. When I say stop, I want you to say Harper. Stop! 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 Thank you very much. The history books will not be kind to Stephen Harper if he maintains a mentality that big business is more important to him than the people of Canada. And I say to Stephen Harper, put your people before your profits. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to say that I don't stand here representing the political parties or the government or the unions. I represent families of the men on the water. I have been listening to and reading people's opinions on the closure of the sub-center for search and rescue here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Judging by the comments some people are making, they have no family making a living on the water, traveling on the water, or traveling over the water. Taking the sub-center out of Newfoundland and Labrador and putting it in Nova Scotia makes as much sense to me as cutting one hand off one thumb or cutting one thumb off one hand and putting it on the other and expecting it to do the same job just as well. <laughs> no one knows our shores and our dialects as well as our people. I've met people who sounded like they just walked off the boat from Ireland, stepped off the ferry from the mainland, and many places in between. I've worked with people and, asked, and, and had to ask them to repeat what they've said because of the thick accent. And if you think five to ten minutes looking up places or trying to understand what is being said doesn't matter, tell that to our son. Four years ago this past May, he was on the nautical legacy. The boat caught fire about 120 kilometers off the coast of Newfoundland. All the crew had to jump ship. Imagine being 18 years old and knowing that you will probably die a slow and cold death within the next few minutes. The water temperature was two degrees Celsius. I know the rest of the crew didn't expect him to survive. They didn't even know if their mayday was heard before communication was cut off. His life was hanging by a thread by the time rescuers got there. His internal body temperature was 32 degrees Celsius after warming up on the helicopter for 40 minutes. Minutes matter when you're in the North Atlantic for one and a half to two hours with a t-shirt and shorts on. If you don't believe me, go jump in the harbor. <laughs> Every time my son or husband leaves to go fishing, there is a possibility they may not come home. That is a reality that I face every day. 
Most times, I don't think any more of it than you would going to your office or you getting on the plane to go to, go to Alberta. But then there are times when the transmission goes on the boat and they are in 40 to 50 knots of wind or when there's a hurricane headed their way and I know they won't make it in in time. Then there are the times I don't know about until they come in, like when a rogue wave sweeps over the boat, as happened to my husband's uncle and cousins, and crashes through the wheelhouse window and wipes out the electronics, or when the boat has tipped to the side in heavy seas and a wave has broken out a window. There are too many fishermen, oil rig workers, trawler men, sailors on freighters that move through our waters and even passengers on the airplanes that cross the Atlantic who depend on the quickest and most efficient way of rescue. My husband and I come from a long line of family that's made its living from the sea. Our son has followed in the footsteps of his fishing heritage. This is 2010 and we don't need to take a step back. Search and rescue should be moving forward, not backwards, which is what will happen if even part of it moves from our shores. I have to wonder if the government goes through with it, will they consider moving 911 from St. John's to Toronto? After all, it's only a call center. When Prime Minister, when Prime Minister Stephen Harper was in Porty Grave on November 30th, 2007, he was there because he wanted to recognize the rescued and the rescuers who have participated in the rescue of the crew of the Nautical Legacy. In the speech he gave that day, he said, and I quote, people who come from somewhere else sometimes romanticize life in fishing communities. They don't appreciate how hard this work is and how dangerous it can be. And he went on to say, although what's left of the Nautical Legacy is now on the ocean floor, her legacy is a reminder that emergency training and search and rescue programs are there to keep seafaring Newfoundlanders safe. Survival at sea is a shared responsibility. When rescuers and the rescued know their jobs and do them properly, everyone comes home safe." Unquote. Prime Minister Harper, do not remove the call center from our shores. They know their job better than anyone else. <laughs> And they go out there to generate wealth for the province and for the country. The least we can do is ensure that they have the ultimate, utmost protection while they do it. From the shores of Makuvik to the St. John's waterfront, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians stand united today. Bring out the pride of a green and gray. White and green, so they're so grand. Long may she sway over body and blade around the shores of the Newfoundland. I just realized one thing we didn't do today, and this is how we'll end her off. Help us out. When sun rays cry. Yeah.